Hey everyone, my name is Trevor Daly with MagMod, and this week's How I Shot It, I get to interview Jeff Watkins. Hey Jeff, how you doing today? Hey, what's up Trevor, man? How's it going? Good, I'm, I'm glad you're here. In fact, I feel like we're representing Arizona right now. We got, uh, I'm over here in the... Uh, in the Phoenix area, you likewise are in the Phoenix area. Right. We, we could have just got together at a coffee shop and did this interview live, right? Yeah, for sure. <laughs> <laughs> no, hey, it's always always good seeing you, and, and I, I love having you in this area. I think it's, it's fantastic that you're uh, taking the time as well to be able to do these videos with me, so I really appreciate it. For sure, man. I appreciate it. Thanks for uh, – it's great for the community. You know, I know people love them. Um, I appreciate you bringing me along, man. I'm excited to share some stuff and kind of walk through how we shot it. That's awesome. That's awesome. You know, and, and before we even jump into the, the image, let's just tell everyone real quickly where they can find you. Uh, your website is color PHX, PHX standing for Phoenix. And then color is actually spelled with a K, right? Yeah. Yeah. K O L O R P H X dot com. And we'll have a little, right. little blur pop up as well. And then Instagram is the same thing. Color PHX, color right. Um, so you guys go check out Jeff's work, give him a follow. Uh, he does amazing stuff and he's always, uh, out there. Uh, helping the community. In fact, Jeff even does a, a workshop. I think it's every fall, if I'm not mistaken, the gathering. Yeah, yeah um, every November. Every November. So you can check that out as well. Get a chance to come out to Arizona when the weather's beautiful and, and check out some of our scenery. So um, excellent. Well, Jeff, with that, let's jump right into some of these images. There's some really cool stuff. Uh, I, I always <clears throat> get excited when I do these because I get a chance to kind of pre-chat with those who are coming on the show and I get to see some of the photos and hear how they did them. And I'm always uh, oftentimes stunned. So one of the things I think kind of sets you apart <clears throat> in some of the shots that I've seen you do is, is how you use color in your photographs as well. So we have this, this shot of these two people looking at each other. Uh, tell us about this shot. Um, so this shot, so one thing like we mentioned on kind of the pre-chat, one thing that I like to do uh, with a couple on a wedding day is um, try to incorporate something that's personal within their day. So I start the day off and I just ask them, hey, give me a few of your favorite colors. You know, what's your top four favorite colors? Yeah. And I don't tell them why. Um, so throughout the day, I'm always trying to find something. Um, it may be a ring shot. It may be a couple shot like this. It may be something creative um, throughout the day to try to incorporate those colors. So, um, So that's where the color comes from. It's kind of a you know, call it whatever you will, my uh, go-to, something that I try to do with everybody that my clients end up really loving. They're like, oh, that's why you asked us for uh, for our favorite color. So um, I, I I love that idea. I've, I've done that with, like, I've seen wedding colors, um, you know, but I, I've never really considered just asking people what are their favorite colors and somehow incorporating. And sometimes even just a little, you know, edge of that color, just a tiny bit. Right really makes that photograph pop and it makes them almost even subconsciously like it more because they're like, ooh, blue or whatever, you know what I right. mean? I think that's a fantastic idea. And what, what's cool about using the magma gels is you can actually, especially in the artistic set, is you can actually stack colors on top of each other right. to create a color that might not exist in the primary set of colors mm -hmm. that people are thinking about. So I hope you don't mind me stealing that idea, but I'm oh, certainly going to do it. <laughs> I think I think I stole it from somebody. So. <laughs> <laughs> right on. Well, so tell us about this shot then. So what uh, what were you thinking when you set this up? When they were looking at where like where were you putting your lights? What modifiers did you use? That kind of stuff. Um. So this one, uh, we had actually went outside after there. So I break the wedding day up into three different spots. Just a brief background. I do their first look, some photographs sunset typical sunset photographs and then i try to pull them out later on in the evening when it's pitch black um mm. to just play with light specifically and do something creative so we had actually went outside um to shoot something different and it rained like as soon as we stepped outside um it started raining and i said well crap like it's raining too hard for us to do anything let's just jump under this tree and grab something really quick so um when I say quick, I mean, this was fast. This was like a minute and a half, two minutes to set this up, execute it, and get back inside. Nice. Um, but they have something that's um, that's unique to their day. They'll remember it, and it incorporated the colors like you said. So, yeah. um, so this shot, um, like I said, is pretty straightforward. Um, I just had them stand kind of in a um, covered area to avoid the rain. I had – I forget who was working with me on that day, but I had my assistant drop down behind them with a um, – with one speed light, a grid, and a sphere. So I stacked those grid and sphere on the back, and then they just held it up. That's what gave that backlight. It kind of highlights the back of the hair, the back of their head and stuff. Um, and then at the same time, I had the assistant spray um, some aerosol, atmosphere aerosol in the back. Love it. Um, and then, you know, everybody uses the little uh, fairy lights. Mm -hmm. um, so I wrapped some fairy lights around the front of the lens. Super quick, I just had those lights in front. There was not a front light at all. Yeah. 
um, just straight backlit with the aerosol and the uh, the fairy lights and the um, and the spinning the grid. That's awesome. I love that shot, Jeff. Along those same lines, you had another shot here. Um, it was one the the champagne uh, shot, but again, uh, let's let's show it because you did it just a little bit different than I've seen it done before. So, yeah. So. Um, a uh, funny story behind this. Uh, later on, after we did this shot, I realized that we just sp- sprayed about uh, four or five hundred dollars worth of champagne in the air. Oh, <laughs> uh, he didn't. He didn't mind. He knew that, but I, that's you know, hilarious. I, I didn't know that in the beginning. He's like, "Yeah, we got a couple extra bottles. Let's do it." Um, oh man! Af- after the fact, I found out that we were spraying five hundred dollars worth of champagne in the air. So hey. <laughs> but um, so next time you have to just grab some Martinelli's or something, <laughs> yeah, right? Um, but yeah, super simple setup, kind of similar to the previous one. Uh, camera left, um, sphere in a grid with a purple gel, and then camera right, um, sphere in a grid with uh, teal gel. And um, I set that a little bit behind them again. I didn't really want to capture like the front light, or I didn't really want to expose them perfectly lit. I just want to grab a little bit of a silhouette and more focus on the champagne in the air. So yeah, uh, two lights, one behind each, and um, I just so you have to be careful. You have to do it um, kind of fast so they yeah. open the champagne. And you have to be ready, otherwise champagne just sprays everywhere. Yeah, make um, sure make sure they they use their thumb to cut you know part of that off to to make yes. it like a fine mist. Yeah, yeah, love it, love it, love <clears throat> it. So Jeff, recently, uh, well, I shouldn't say recently, but back in <clears throat> February, uh, we were out at WPPI, and I know you went out and did a, a shoot with some. Uh, other incredible photographers, Jason Vincent, Chad Winstead. Uh, mm-hmm. I can't remember if anyone else is on that shoot with you guys, but uh, you got some incredible shots. I would love to talk about one that you have here um, of this model that's walking kind of down the road. Um, granted, this is out in the desert. So <clears throat> for those of you who are wondering, you know, hey, we don't want to walk on roads and train tracks. Don't yeah. worry. This is this is not uh, <laughs> not a busy populated road by any means. Mm-hmm. Um, but tell us about this awesome photograph. Yeah, so this was actually, we were packing up, getting ready to leave. Um, I had wanted to shoot something on the road um, since we got there. Mm-hmm. This is so secluded. I mean, out in the middle of nowhere. It's like a ghost town kind of yeah. thing. Yeah. Um, and if if I'm not mistaken, the end of this road is a dead end anyway. But yeah. um, I saw the sky. I really liked the subtle colors in the sky, and I wanted to grab something. So before we packed up, I just said, hey, and I threw, um, goes back to the, the mag box, the, the ease of use. We already had it set up, but I just set it to the side. You can see the light spill from yeah. camera left. But I set it to the side, and that was the fabric diffuser. And I just told her, um, hey, I want you to step back about 15 feet. When I tell you to go, I want you to walk through this light spill. And then with every step, just give me something different. Move your arms, move your hips, move your head, yeah. play with your hair, whatever you do. Give me something different on each shot. Um, and I got about five frames out of that. Um, so yeah, super, super easy. I love, that's what I love about the mag box. You've heard me say it before. Um, it's so easy to throw up and get something that's awesome, um, that your client will love. So that's right. I, you know, it's interesting cause, um, I actually love the spill of light along the road on this shot. And I, and I think the reason I like it so much is because you got low enough that it doesn't, your eyes aren't drawn to it. Like, like, you know, sometimes when you have too much light spilling, like for example, you and I being in Arizona, we shoot a lot of golf course type weddings and stuff like that. And I usually try to keep light off the ground because I don't want my eyes being drawn to the bright grass or whatever. But I think what really works well in this shot is that you got low enough where that light spilling across, it, it, it creates kind of this line of like the rule of thirds, right? So mm-hmm. we got this line there and then it, it complements perfectly with where her head's placed in the image. You got this line perfectly there. And then, and then the fact that she's looking towards the light um, allows her to be lit up as well, which, um, it just, it works. Love it, man. So now when you were out there, uh, in Vegas, you guys uh, did a few more shoots. Let's talk about a few more of these images. Um, there's one here with, uh, uh, it looks like, uh, she's in front of a, is it like an old Cadillac or something? What is this car? <laughs> oh yeah. The pink, that's like an old pink Cadillac. Uh-huh. Um, she, I, I actually hadn't planned to shoot that, but she was like, Hey, I've got this kind of pink colored dress. I really want to shoot the Cadillac before we leave. Um, so we set up and shot it. And um, frankly, I just shot it to, so she would have something that she that she wanted there. But um, I was I was blown away at how it turned out. It ended up being one of my favorite ones. So yeah, this is just an old pink Cadillac in the middle of the desert, in the middle of this ghost town. And um, what a camera cool left here. Uh, we had a few frames again, but again, this ended up being my favorite one. But camera left was a mag, bo- uh, mag box with fabric diffuser again mm-hmm. um and we just i said hey i don't want you to look straight at the light because i feel like 
I feel like a lot of photos are, hey, look at the light, look at the light, look at the light. Um, and I wanted something a little more dramatic. So I had her face yeah. away from the light and then kind of turn into the light. So you yep. get that, you know, the right side of their face is, you know, exposed good, but then you get a nice dramatic shadow on the other side. So that was a goal and I love it. It's, uh, again, another super simple shot with a mag box. Yeah. Well, and the, the way the position of your mag box in the model, you get this nice little Rembrandt light, uh, kind of a little triangle underneath your eye, which looks really cool. So it really just makes that helps it pop, you know, and gives you that right. definition on that side. Um, fantastic shot. Love it, dude. So you said that was Magbox soft fabric diffuser, which is the same as the yep. one before it was also Magbox soft fabric diffuser. Right. Um, very cool. So Jeff, this, uh, tell us about this other shot here where, uh, it looks like another one of these antique cars. Uh, now this shot, it almost looks like it was shot during the daytime. Um, it does look like that. So, um, it was actually after sunset. So if you look in, wait, wait, like wait. That, so this shot of her in the truck was after sunset. Yeah. The sun's already gone. Oh my uh, goodness. So if you look like uh, top left corner of the image, yeah, um, kind of the background behind the truck, you can see there's no light. It's black. Yeah, um, it's already blue. If you look at that little piece of the top, it's already blue sky, blue hour there. Uh -huh. um, but what we did is camera left. I took um, a sphere and a straw gel. Uh, Jason Vincent actually, we set up this li this lighting um, scenario, but we took a sphere grid and a straw gel to the left. I'm sorry, no grid, just a sphere. Mm -hmm. And it gave that little touch of uh, sunlight color Yeah. Um, to make it look like that and um, kind of came over the front of the hood and through the window. Um, and that's what it is, but it's crazy. Um, a lot of times incorporating light, like um, I don't want it to look like there's light incorporated, if that makes sense. Yeah. Uh, I want to fake a sunset or uh, mimic sunlight or natural light, um, even if it's in the middle of the day and it's like a funky shadow spot, um, or maybe we missed sun sunset or something like that. But that's what we did here. Um, I wanted it to look like the sun was coming through, um, and honestly, the sun wasn't even facing that direction. So even if the sun was up, it wouldn't have looked like that. Um, yeah. But I wanted it to look like the sun coming through the window um, and kind of highlighting her, and again, giving a little dramatic, uh, dramatic look that highlights where you want it to be highlighted, but you still have some shadows to really bring it out and make it pop. Yeah. Oh, I, I, I mean, when I look at this shot, it looks like it was shot at, uh, you know, three o'clock in the afternoon or something. It looks like it was lit with the sun, uh, coming through the, the truck window there and lighting her up. It, it's awesome. I love that. And, and it makes it even more awesome that you shot it after the sun had already yeah. set. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, probably, uh, I'm guessing, but probably 10 or 15 minutes after the sun had already set. So it's totally blue outside. Yeah. Fantastic shot, dude. I love it. And uh, again, it's one of those things where I, I need to sometimes think outside the box when I'm on those shoots after the sun has set. I never really, um, you know, putting somebody in a car like that and then being able to blast them with that light. And then you use the, you said the straw filter, uh, the straw yeah. gel. Yeah, straw gel. Cool. Love it, man. So speaking of car shots, Jeff, one of the, your most popular images that I think uh, I've seen out there uh, in the community, and, and I think you even got featured on the Canon Instagram mm -hmm. page, uh, is a shot with a couple in a car. Uh, let's pop that one up here, and let's talk about this shot. Tell us a little bit about how you set the lighting up for this. Um, like I mentioned earlier, this was um, the third part of our portrait uh, session on a wedding day. Um, it's completely dark outside. So this couple was really dramatic. They're really kind of romantic and moody type couple. So... Um, we wanted to work with a car. So I put him in the car, um, in the back seat. I know you mentioned earlier, um, you thought this was with one light. Yeah, I did. In the back. Um, and so that means my goal was achieved. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's actually two lights. So I did want that one night to do exactly what you said and kind of, um, you know, highlight the back and really, really brighten up the back of the car. But yeah. I put another light in his lap and I just had him hold it with a sphere and a grid. Would you say that that light, because I imagine some of that light bouncing off the ceiling, because the ceiling's yeah. kind of a white ceiling. Um, I imagine some of it bounced off, kind of wrapped around the front. Do you, do you believe that that flash in front was just to kind of complement to fill in the shadows maybe, so there wasn't so much dramatic shadow underneath? Right, so I shot this first with one light and uh -huh. only the one light in the back. And I found out that like um, the eye sockets and the nose, yeah. you got some like, um, not even shadow, just complete like disappear holes like yeah, black spots darkness, yeah um and it just wasn't appealing so we just uh we just do that in his lap super quick um just to kill that so yeah. it wasn't it wasn't very much power at all most of the lights coming from the back but that just killed the shadows um and kind of brought out their facial expression a little more you know a, a little more excuse yeah. me but yeah i brought it i brought it home it's a great photograph i love it but like i told you earlier um i didn't really think it was like the top five of the gallery you know 
Um, and my wife said, uh, oh, my God, this is the one. Like, it's awesome. And I was like, yeah, it's a great photo, but I don't think it's it. And then um, I woke up, like, the next day or maybe it was the day after, and Canon had uh, put the photo on their Instagram. And That's I was right. like, oh, I guess I'm wrong. So <laughs> um, that just goes to show you don't don't throw everything to the side. Yeah. Um, and maybe not critique it quite as hard as what you normally would. I love it, man. Those yeah. are some good parting words right there. For sure, man. <laughs> it's funny. Every time I do these, uh, the conversation will go over the images, and then it seems like the photographers always have these good parting words that we never really planned for, but it just comes up in these conversations, and I love it. So, Jeff, let's tell everyone one more time um, to find you. You're at Color Phoenix, color spelled with a K, and then Phoenix yeah. is the initial, so K O L O R P H X dot com. And then likewise, your Instagram is the same. So, again, we'll have that yeah. pop up here so everyone can see it. We'll make sure to include some uh, links in the captions below, guys. So definitely go check those out as far as uh, checking out more of Jeff's work. Be sure to stay tuned uh, every Friday. We do these How I Shot It. So so join us each and every Friday and get inspired for the weekend shoot. Jeff, you rock, brother. I'm, I'm so glad that we were able to have this conversation. I'm Thanks, glad dude. that you're in the Phoenix area. So you and I, we've had a chance to shoot before together, and it's always a pleasure. So, uh, yeah. So thank you so much for being here on the show. Perfect, man. I appreciate it. Thanks for having me. All right. Take care. Thanks, everyone. <laughs>